Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another part of our Summer Kids Club for the Aquarium Online Academy. We're going to be exploring sharks and rays today while we explore with some art. So we're going to be doing our Draw With Us program today. I hope you're excited to draw a little bit of our fun animal friends here behind me, especially one of them. That's a great reef shark. Now, you can also ask us questions during our program today. So you get to text us questions if you have anything you want to learn more about the sharks and rays. Right here, the number on the bottom, 562-286-1838. My friend Jen is over on question control. They'll be bringing the questions in the studio. So if you have some fun things you'd like to learn more about the sharks and rays while we draw them, go ahead and text us questions. If you're not watching live, send us an email. That's the easiest way for you to get your questions answered. Down here also, live at lbaop.org. Our educators will be able to get back to you and answer some of your fun questions. But I also have my friend Emily controlling all the shark and ray magic behind me here. We are in the studio and we're going to learn about these beautiful, beautiful animals today. Now, during our Summer Kids Club, we'll be doing all this week and next week. You can also explore further with our at-home activities. On our website, did the Summer Kids Club page you can click on all the different class titles and check out the at-home activities you can download or print out if you want to explore more so let's get practicing our observation because when people go out and want to do some fun art stuff we kind of need to observe the areas we want to draw or take pictures of or paint or whatever kind of art you want to do let's make some quick observations together what kinds of things do we notice now, if you were watching during our last class, we practiced this quite a bit. How can we make observations in a space like this? Hmm. Well, if we're going to draw some sharks and rays, we don't want the sharks and rays to hide. Wait, there's one. They often like to hide as soon as we want to draw them. So sometimes when we make observations, we have to be patient for the things we're trying to draw to show up. And then they kind of tease us a little bit. Now, I notice there's a lot of other things in here besides a shark and a ray. What else did you notice in this habitat? Hmm, we got like a fun little cave right here. We have some coral. Of course, some lovely sharks. This exhibit is kind of a long oval, so we're looking out across a great span of space behind us here. So we're going to try and draw some different layers of things stacked on top of each other so we can try and draw a bunch of fun animals hanging out in a coral reef. Hmm. What else did you see? We have a few species of sharks. We have our gray reef sharks. Only a couple of their fins, like on their tail, do they have some black marking. Maybe a little bit on their pectoral, pectoral fins. We have our black tip sharks right there. I'm trying to follow it on my screen. The black tip reef sharks are back there. It looks like all of their fins got dipped in some black paint. But then we have this lovely shark. She is so cute. This is our zebra shark. This is Fern. I was waiting for Fern to turn because Fern has a little notch missing from her dorsal fin. Fern and baby will often be in this one exhibit. So if you see two zebra sharks in here, Fern is baby's mom. And to tell Fern from baby, baby's actually a little bit bigger. Fern has that little, little notch, little divot out of her dorsal fin. Oh, hello, fish. That stingray that was right there, just barely, you can see her tail sticking back out. She likes to hide and hang out just outside of visual reach. The camera can only look so in so many angles in here. And she likes to hang out right out of the way, which is why we have some fun ray videos and images we're going to show you because we're going to show you how to draw a stingray would you like to learn how to draw a stingray with me all right well let's get a picture of a stingray up so that we can get a better idea of what that looks like we saw everybody else swimming around but let's take a quick look at a stingray miss emily's going to help us out with that oh here comes fern again hello fern now, while we switch over to an image of our stingray, that's actually a good time to get any of your drawing materials you need. You can draw on any kind of paper you're allowed to. Don't draw on the paper you're not supposed to. But get some scrap paper, some extra paper you have, printer paper, 
anything that you're allowed to draw with. Heck, I've even used Expo markers on my windows because it wipes right off. But wherever you're allowed to draw, get some stuff ready to draw and things to draw with. Now, I'm going to be using some dry erase markers on a board. makes it easy for me to erase stuff. You don't always have to erase when you draw things. You can just make it part of your art. So here is a spotted eagle ray. Now, one of our dive friends was in the water. It's kind of hovering above this little So if we wanted to draw the stingray, what kind of shapes do we need to create? Kind of a diamond pattern, right? Has a pointed fin on either side. So we can a little pointed. It's like we took a diamond and we smoothed it this way and stretched it this way. You have a couple of fins here in the back. Kind of tail. You don't have to draw them if you're not able to. Now, eagle rays is really, really long. Time. You don't have to draw an eagle ray. You can draw whatever kind of ray you want. Some rays are really short. So eagle rays can get very long. Tail. I think they're close to go. Now, when you want to color it, you have polka dots on the board. So if you like polka dots, this is a good animal for you to observe and have some fun with. Polka dot. Perfect pause of our diamond shape right there. So we're going to need a diamond shape, maybe a tail. You also want to think about, well, what direction do I want to draw it from? Guess what? I'm going to help you draw it from a couple different directions. And then we'll add it into my coral reef habitat. You ready? All right, let's go over to our camera. So here's our document camera. Make sure I'm zoomed out enough. Good. There's a couple ways you can draw your stingrays. Now, if you wanted to draw it like you were a snorkeler or a diver swimming above them, we can draw it just like we just saw on the image. We need something kind of like a diamond shape like this, right? Now I'm going to make it bigger right here. I'm going to start to help me because I sometimes don't have very, very good symmetry when I draw. I'm going to make a couple of dots. And that's going to be the ends of my fins. You ready? I also make noises when I draw. Helps me draw. Now I didn't complete the diamond up here because that's where the face is going to go. And their faces aren't always perfectly diamond in the diamond shape. Then we kind of go, whoop, do the same thing back here. Whoop, and I left another gap. Remember we saw that tail on the stingray? The tail is the easy part. Just a couple of really long lines whoop, stick together in the middle. Now the face, you can't always draw the faces of rays easily. So an easy thing is kind of make this curved line right there because their head sticks out from their fins. One of the ways you can tell a skate from a ray is the face and the fins. So on a ray, the fins tend to come right right here. Not on every ray. So rays that flap to swim, the fins come about like right here. But skates, the fins go way past their face. So even if you're a rounded ray, like our local round rays, and you look like it's just a little circle, their fins kind of come up to the front of their face. But if you're a skate, your fin goes way in front, so it looks like you have a really, really long nose. So that's how you tell a skate from a ray. That is a ray. So here's a nice picture of our eagle ray. And you can see this lovely diamond shape, and the fin goes right to the back of the head, right there. Long fin. Now this is a good angle to also notice we have this little fin right here. So stingrays have one tiny little fin that sticks up on their tail. You can add it to your picture if you want to, or if you're okay without it, it's up to you. But if you look closely, you can also see the barb, or the stinger of a stingray, right there. So on their tail, it's like this extra little lobe of skin right here. And it's a skin sheath, and that's where the barb sticks. And when they poke their tail up over their body, the barb sticks out. So it's a defensive tool. It's not like a scorpion. They can't just like, Wah! They only use it if they really, really have to. All right. Good angle of watching our stingray. So when you have your stingray, you can also add the eyes. And rays also have this big 
space right here called a spiracle. It's like having a nose on the back of your head, but they're also special if they have a little nose on their nose too. So rays and skates and sharks all have this extra space back here to help breathe. So they can pull water in and squirt it out their gills. So where are the gills on a shark? Do you remember? They're like right here. What well, looks like their neck. But the, the gills on a, on a skate ray or any of those flat animals like that, the gills are right here. So if you want to know a shark from a ray, the gills of a ray are down here. What looks like their chest, where the gills of a shark are up here. So when you draw your sharks and rays, you can put your gills in the correct spot, depending on what you've drawn. Because there's some sharks that are kind of flat-ish, like angel sharks. They're kind of flat, but their gills are still right here. That's how you can tell it's a shark. All right. Ooh, yeah. So you can see very eye-shaped eyes. Not every ray has an eye like this. Sometimes their eyes are a little smaller or kind of hard to tell, but they do have really good vision just like we do. So you can draw their eyes just like you would draw people eyes. The other thing that's kind of fun about this ray is their big nose. This actually helps them as they hunt. They grab their food. What is the, my favorite ray and shark? That's a really good question. So don't forget, you can text us questions during the program. One of my favorite rays is the eagle ray because they always look like they're smiling. But another one of my favorites is one that's outside at our shark lagoon that I'm not sure we have a, we can try and bring a picture up of it. It's our blue spotted ribbon tail rays. And that's just because they're super brightly colored. That's what I love about them is that most of the rays and skates that we see have, like we saw in the eagle ray, dark colors or light white colors. But the blue spotted ray literally has giant blue spots on their back. That's one of the things I love about them. Don't expect them to have bright blue spots, but they do. Favorite shark? I don't know. I haven't thought about that one too much. I'll have to think about my favorite shark and get back to you. One of our coworkers, their favorite shark is the whale shark. Another polka dotted animal. So polka dots are pretty fun in the ocean. All right, now I'm going to go back to my drawing real quick because I'm going to show you another way you can draw your stingrays. I'm going to get rid of our other one. And I'm going to add this other ray to my coral reef. So if I were playing in the ocean, just like if I were at Shark Lagoon, we're watching the rays kind of like this. Right? So we're going to draw it from kind of a side view, right? So here's a turtle. They have kind of a similar, what we call profile. So rays and skates kind of have this oval shape when you look at them from the side. So do turtles, because that's what we call aerodynamics. And so do sharks. They have this football shape. So a lot of these animals have a very sleek shape to be able to swim through the water with a really good speed. Or if you're a stingray, it's to hide in the sand. Our stingray is hiding so well, just her little tail sticking up right here. That's what she does. Well, let's try and draw a stingray a little bit from the side. Are you ready? Now, this one's a little tougher, so don't worry. It doesn't look great the first time. Now, instead of just drawing the diamond shape like, like we were going to, I'm going to kind of draw it tilted. So we have one fin right here. And it comes up like this. So I made that second line a little bit longer. From here, I'm actually going to do the tail now. So I have an idea of where the tail is supposed to go. Someone asked what kind of sound effects I make. I make big whooshy sounds. Now, since I'm going to draw my, my ray at a little bit of an angle, let's go this way. And this fin comes down this way. And then... Do that little kind of rounded bloop for a face. And let's make some nice big eyes this time. Whee! Very happy. There you go. Now, since rays have gills on the underside, remember, there's we can't see them up here. If you want, you can add a little extra line right here to make it look like their body. Because they're pretty thick in the middle. Their fins are pretty thin and muscular. But their bodies are pretty thick, just like this one. 
I'm not even sure what kind of ray that is. It almost looks like a southern ray. Southern rays have the very standard diamond shape to their body. Very big, powerful fins. Ours actually, in our exhibit, likes to swoop down like it was a falcon diving through the air. So, But that's kind of the shape of a ray you can draw from the side. Now, if you look, you can actually see there's the eye and the spiracles right behind the eye. Remember, it helps them breathe while they're hiding in the sand. So that's how we're going to draw our stingray. But remember, we saw other fun stuff in the coral reef, didn't we? We saw coral. We should probably add some of that, too. I have some fun colors I'm going to make out of my coral. What kinds of coral should we draw? What do you think? Did you see any big branched corals, like tree-looking coral? We can do some of those. Some kind of look like a cabbage leaf. That's my impersonation of a cabbage. We have some, some big flat ones that kind of overlap. And then there's these big heavy branched ones like this. So there's a lot of different kinds of coral we can add to a coral reef and a lot of fun colors. Now, if you want, you can also make flexible corals that kind of look like very leafy branches and they can kind of sway. So these are hard coral. Hard coral just kind of sit still. But soft corals can sway a little bit in the water. Now, if you're watching really closely, the thing that's swaying in the back right there is not coral. That is a crown of thorn star. So sometimes camouflaged animals really like to pretend to be like something else. And that crown of thorn star almost looks like some coral. All right, are you ready to make some coral? I got my markers. Okay. I'm going to make a nice bright green piece of coral underneath where my stingray is at. So I'm going to move my, my page a little bit. Yeah, we'll do it right here. So it has flat spaces. And the cool thing about this is you can make whatever shape you want. But I'm going to draw it from the, from the bottom up so that I can layer on top of it. So you just kind of make these really flat spaces. And you don't have to fill them all in because you have to make more big, swirly, flat spaces right here. So some of our corals are big and flat, grow on top of each other. Mm, let's add another one up here. Big tabletop piece right there. Add a little bit of a rock face for it to hang out on. You can always color things in later after you've picked all your designs. I like polka dots today, apparently, so we're going to make some green polka dots for it. Lots of random dots. Now, we also saw that big old purple branched one. So, here's the challenge with that one. They all look like the shape of your finger. So, it's kind of hard to draw a lot. But we're going to start with little tiny purple blobs and just kind of layer them around each other. So take a look. They all just look like somebody's, everybody's got their fingers sticking up and they're just in different layers. So just make a bunch of these purple stalks sticking up right in front of each other. And we got these. And then I got a big purple stalk, big purple stalk. And they all just kind of connect down on the bottom like this. What kind of coral do you want to add? What kinds of shapes corals? You can even invent some corals if you want. There's corals that, remember, said are like branches. They're called staghorn coral. So it's kind of like if you drew a tree but didn't put any leaves on it. Staghorn corals actually grow really quickly. These cor coral that you see like here, the purple one and green one we grew, they don't, or drew, they, they grow very, very slowly. Maybe 
an inch at most per year. So it takes a while for them to get pretty big. But the big branch coral, like the like this one right here, or like one up here, they grow a little bit quicker. Now this is the one that's uh, flexible. This is a softer coral. So this is actually an older video. This, this one right here is that purple one we saw in the other video. It started about half the size when we first got it. And it was so big about two years ago, we actually had to start breaking pieces off because it was so big the diving team couldn't get in to clean the exhibit. That's how big it grew over the 23 years we've been around. But don't worry, we didn't do anything wrong with those pieces. We actually took them and grew more pieces of coral with it. So what kind of shapes coral would you like to draw with your stingray floating around? A couple questions coming in, so we'll make sure we'll answer some questions. But what kinds of coral would you like to draw? Here's another uh, coral exhibit. This one doesn't have live coral. This one has a bunch of replica coral. The fish don't mind. Don't seem to know. We have these big old fan corals right here. Some brain like coral. So most of the brain corals actually grow in a big ball, like your brain would actually look. So some of the other ones have coral like this. There's so many coral species. And a good question from someone, hey, there's a parrotfish that likes to eat coral. A good question that came in from somebody asking, how old are corals? Are they older than dinosaurs? Dinosaurs have been around, well, have, were around for a while, long while. But there's so many other things that are older than dinosaurs. So if you look at the entire history of the planet, the entire what we call geologic time scale, there's a lot of time before dinosaurs. A lot. Sharks have been around for about 400 million years, a lot longer than the dinosaurs. Coral are some of the first animals that probably grew in the ocean before we had these large things like fish. So coral developed, or something like coral, maybe not the exact thing we know of what coral is today, but something like coral developed long, long before the dinosaurs. Now, if you want to try and draw a fan coral, they're kind of fun. Get ready for squiggles. Jen loves fan corals. She's a fan of fan coral, you could say. So if we want to, we want to draw some squiggles, we're going to do that. Now, just like our kind of flat green corals like this one, we can just kind of make a shape. Like, wee! Big old fan shape. Now, from here, we're not done. So it's not quite like a fan like we blow ourselves up. Remember? Do you remember from that last exhibit? There's lots of holes and spaces. Let's take another quick look. It looks almost like the veins of a leaf. So... Those lines and leaves you see from them that fall from trees help water and nutrients move around. That's not what it's for here, but it's kind of how you would draw it. So we can draw those thicker lines in the middle of our fan coral and then lots of tiny little lines to connect everything together. You want to try it? Let's see. Jen can crit critique my fan corals later since she's such a big fan of fan corals. Now, I almost think that this looks like rivers connecting, but you can also think of them like little little veins in the leaf connecting together, too. They have these big, thick lines. I'm not going to make it a little bit bigger right here. Because i got to make a bunch of little squiggles now, too. And just little squiggles. Little tiny squiggles. Ooh, but, oh, that didn't quite look like I wanted to, but too late. That's part of art. Sometimes we don't think it looks good but everybody else is like that's amazing and that's okay doesn't have to look perfect because it's art lots of little squiggles in there lots of wrinkly little squiggles in our fan coral all right we have about seven minutes left you can keep drawing some coral more stingrays if you like i would like to draw a shark do you want to draw a shark with me too all right so we saw sharks and rays together hanging out in the habitats, right? Sharks live in coral reefs, just like this reef shark. Aha. Well, sharks have a very easy shape to start with. So instead of trying to draw diamonds from a weird angle, sharks are pretty easy for us to add in. They have this football 
shape we call fusiform in science. And that shape is very aerodynamic, helps them move through the water nicely. And all their fins help support their body so they can swim like they're supposed to. Sharks are pretty nice to draw because you can draw really fat round sharks, you can draw skinny sharks, long sharks, you can draw sharks with different sized fins because all those kinds of sharks kind of exist. So whatever kind of shark you like to draw, we can try it out. Now I'm going to draw my shark up in this corner right here. So we need to start with something kind of oval football-ish shaped. Here's a kind of oval football shape. Almost like if you wanted to draw an eye. We all often start with this kind of oval shape for our eyes. Now from here, we need to add some fins, don't we? Sharks have a lot of fins. They have eight fins and then a tail. And then the tail can be whatever shape triangles you want, but they have a couple triangles. My shark right now almost looks like a tuna, but that's why we're going to make other fins make it not look like a tuna. I'm going to put one dorsal fin there, one dorsal fin there. The secret to sharks is if they have a big dorsal fin to start with and then a little dorsal fin afterwards, they swim really quickly. So when you look at a shark, you can also observe how fast they might move will tell you about their fins. So sharks that have two different sized dorsal fins right here, they're fast swimmers. The closer they are to the same size, the slower they tend to go. So think of sharks like bamboo sharks. If you've ever visited the Aquarium of the Pacific and are bamboo sharks out at Shark Lagoon, they're not the fastest swimmers. And in fact, they like to sit still on the floor a lot. So they don't need the same kinds of fins of the shark I'm going to draw here. If you want to draw a sh kind of slow shark, you can draw the fins similar in size. So I have the dorsal fins. I'm going to need to draw a pectoral fin, aren't we? Let's do pectoral fin right here. Big pectoral fin. And an eraser. Boop. Right there. Now sharks also have these little fins underneath here two for each set so like one on either side left and right just like they have a left and right pectoral fin well now we have a football shark we need to draw a face don't we sharks have eyes kind of like that stingray when you see pictures of sharks with really dark eyes chances are they're eating so one of the cool things about sharks is their eyes tend to pull back as they eat because it helps protect their eyes. Because if you're trying to shove food in your face and you don't want it to hit you in the face, sometimes you have to do things to protect your eyes. Other sharks kind of have darker eyes most of the time, like this great white does. Now sharks tend to also have their mouth kind of underneath but forward in their body. Other sharks, like our local leopard shark, has the mouth more underneath, pointing farther down because it chews off of things from the floor like crustaceans. Zebra sharks also have their mouth underneath. So check out that mouth right there. Sharks that like to feed off of the things that crawl around on the ground, their mouth tends to point more downwards. Sharks that have to chase their food and chase it and grab it from behind, their mouth has to be pointing more forward. So I kind of drew a great white type of shark. So let's draw its mouth coming in this way. And some fun teeth. Since the mouth is a little small, I didn't have to actually make all the triangles. You can just kind of make lines and dots in our imaginations, fill in all the gaps for us. Well, that's a pretty good start to a coral reef. There's lots more that you can explore and watch, though. So if you check out some of our webcams, you can find more animals and more coral pieces that you can add to your drawing today. Now, there's more exploration to do afterwards. So if you like to draw, if you're allowed to in certain areas where you can take some sidewalk chalk out and draw on your sidewalks or your driveways or where, wherever you might live, you can add some art 
to everybody's daily walk. So your neighbors that go out for a walk, maybe they would like to see your sharks and corals out on their daily walk. So make sure you can find out where you can go out and draw if you need to and get the right stuff to draw with. And you can go explore some more today with more art. Now, don't forget, we have more Kids Club coming up. We have another program starting soon about wetlands. And we're going to do one about sharks later today, too. So think about all the fun things we just learned about watching the shapes of sharks. But we're going to talk more about how we can help the sharks in our ocean. So don't forget, share your adventures and your fun with us with a hashtag AOP Kids Club. And everywhere that you want to post all that fun stuff, we will get to watch and help. Enjoy all the fun that you're having outside of the aquarium today, too. So thank you once again for joining us for our Summer Kids Club, part of our Aquarium Online Academy, and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday morning and afternoon. Jen helped drop.